Hello, welcome to the Friday, October 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I took a quick look at a botnet that has been uh, harassing our honeypots. It's uh, going after a stalker portal. Now, stalker portal, pretty sort of... Uh, ominous uh, name but what it really is it's software made by a company called ministra that's uh, typically running on top of ip tv boxes about two years ago there were a number of vulnerabilities that had been uh, discovered uh, in uh, this uh, particular software looks like they're not so much going after the vulnerabilities they're downloading a file that indicates the version but then they're also going after some of the streaming apis which makes me believe that they're probably looking for free tv access while it's uh, maybe a bit uh, less uh, benign than, uh, for example, running arbitrary code in the systems or actually uh, turning uh, these devices into some kind of actual stalking or spy device, it could still, of course, impact the service uh, for the legitimate user of these uh, devices. A standard uh, NAT firewall should block these requests. Sort of interesting that they're looking uh, at the wide range of ports here. So uh, maybe they're looking if uh, users may have exposed those devices on an off port in order uh, to, for example, watch a TV uh, via some kind of streaming application or so while they're away from home. And by all means, if you know more about uh, this particular attack, this type of scan, uh, please let me know. Uh, I don't have one of these devices here to play with and actually experiment uh, how they exactly work. And if you saw my write-up about the Apache vulnerability, you probably saw that uh, they uh, did uh, in version 2449 significantly modify the uh, validation of URLs. They essentially ripped out a good part of that code and replaced it. Well, uh, we had the directory traversal uh, vulnerability in 2449 that was then fixed in 2450. Sadly, this fix was not sufficient and now we do have 2451. Apache gave this new vulnerability a new CVE number, CVE 2021-42013, and it apparently only affects specific configurations uh, where you're using aliases in order to expose some directories and are not uh, applying a specific access control uh, to those directories. So that's where then the directory traversal could still happen and provide access to content that a user should not have have access to. In short, whatever you did to find your 2449 versions of Apache, just do the same thing again, but now for 2450. And researchers at ESET found a new Linux uh, rootkit, Font on Lake is what they uh, call it. And well, it sort of has all the uh, hallmark uh, capabilities of a Linux rootkit. For example, it does replace a number of system binaries. And then also establishes a backdoor to provide persistent access uh, to the system. Part of the goal here appears to be the exfiltration of uh, credentials. Also bash history and such is exfiltrated. All standard targets as far as uh, Linux goes. What makes this particular rootkit special is that it's not detected uh, when you're sort of looking for common rootkits because it appears to be custom written. Often on Linux, you find uh, fairly old uh, rootkits that sort of have uh, been handed down from one generation of attacker uh, to the next. And of course, signatures have been written for these. This one is new and different, which makes it a little bit more difficult to detect. But the functionality overall seems to be very similar to some of the traditional Linux rootkits. So one way how you uh, protect yourself from rootkits and malware like this, of course, by monitoring your systems and looking for unauthorized uh, changes. And one tool that I really like there is OS Query. OS Query uh, comes out of uh, Facebook, I believe, actually. It's open source software and it allows you to query system parameters across uh, large uh, fleets of uh, systems with a SQL-like uh, query language. It's uh, 
really relatively easy to deploy and use. And now version 5 of OS Query has been released, which also includes uh, endpoint security support for Mac OS. Now, you may say, hey, Mac OS is Unix and it supports Linux. Why the problem with Mac OS? Well, uh, Mac OS in the recent versions has uh, introduced all kinds of entitlements and such to essentially uh, make uh, the system more secure, but that does get in the way, of course, of some of these security tools. And in this latest version, they now uh, integrate very well with Mac OS. Even they have some deployment examples if you're managing your systems with mobile device management, how to then uh, deploy OS Query on your Mac OS systems. So pretty neat uh, software. If you don't already have something like this, uh, certainly uh, worthwhile taking a look at it. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Next week, I will most likely not have a podcast on Thursday due to some uh, travel. Uh, not sure if I'll have one on Friday, but uh, well, I'll announce it when we get uh, to that. Uh, really depends on how things uh, work out travel-wise. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.